Today in the Smuggler's Room, we are... What? Somebody's gotta sand all these parts. But I'm doing the intro here, man. And I'm sure the audience is on the edge of their seat. Just tell them about the droid build already and get on with it. Half of them already left to go watch another video waiting for you to get to the point. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're building a really great droid. Wow, that really sold it. Uh, that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggles Room. This week, this chubby geek has an awesome droid build project for you. That's right, you heard me. We've teamed up with the Programming Electronics Academy to bring you a full droid build series. And as far as the droid we've chosen, it's unlike any you've seen before. Steve Corman is an amazing artist. And in 2016, he entered into the Industrial Light and Magic Art Department Challenge. There were 3,888 artists that participated and the catalog of work done is incredible. I'll leave a link to that page in the notes below so you can check out all the amazing artwork. While looking through all of this artwork, we zeroed in on Steve Corman's entry, specifically his DD3 concept droid. I'm not sure if it was the dual domes or the fact that it was floating in midair, or it just had that astronomic look to it, but I could not get this droid out of my head. I mean, it's been three years since I saw this and it's always been on my bucket build list. So we reached out to Steve and told him that we really wanted to share his artwork and build this droid. He gave us our blessing, so we decided to dive right in. And let's go ahead and start with this little guy's backpack. Getting today. I wanted to start with the backpack because I've been thinking about the process of getting smooth, rounded corners by combining styrene, contact cement, and then some type of draft board or MDF. I thought I could save myself some serious time in sanding and filling if I just took the thin styrene and slowly applied it to the top of the skeletal structure. My surprise, it worked really well. Now, I know we use the laser cutter to cut the frame, and we definitely use the laser cutter on a bit more in this project, but I don't want you to get discouraged and think you can't do this. You can do it with a number of other types of tools and techniques. You could use a jigsaw, you could use a bandsaw. You could cut all of these pieces out in styrene with minimal tools. All the files we created for this project are gonna be available to our patrons on our Patreon page. So if you were thinking about supporting the channel, for a small contribution, you can have access to all of these files. As I mentioned, this episode and build series is sponsored by the Programming Electronics Academy, and they are an invaluable resource when it comes to learning Arduino electronics and programming. Take my simple friend here. This is Other Brian, and he's having a lot of trouble getting his lights to blink. Why won't you blink, stupid? You're supposed to blink! Don't you want to blink? Isn't that your job? Now, if he'd been using the Programming Electronics Academy, that light would be flashing and he'd be more like this. Programming Electronics Academy has a free 12 part course that can get you comfortable with programming, electronics, and the tools you need to work with Arduino. I can tell you firsthand that I've yet to find another resource that makes learning Arduino this easy and enjoyable. Got all the links and details in the show notes below. 
So if you've ever wanted to learn Arduino electronics or programming, or maybe you just want to raise your game to the next level, I couldn't recommend a better place. We also have a special promotion for all of you smugglers out there, but more on that in a bit. Let's dive in to the project. The droid design has a small body, and for that we created a couple of discs and then put simple struts to create the frame. This will be lightweight and simple to construct. Then it just needs to be skinned with the styrene. So I'm realizing as I'm going through the process of this that I could have used the laser cutter to score lines in the circle pattern and even numbered them so that when I laid in the struts they would have all been perfectly spaced and then exactly level when I put them in there because right now they're haphazard like crazy in there. It's going to work just fine. And when it's covered in the styrene, it won't matter. But uh, yeah, gotta learn how to use the tool a little better so I can make it look a little nicer, even on the inside. Now, there were a couple of pieces in this build I knew I would struggle to make out of wood or other materials, specifically the parts that connect the top dome to the body. Those are definitely a challenge. So I designed those collars in Fusion 360 and then used my 3D printer to make them. Those files will also be included on our Patreon page and available for members. Now, I've updated the file since printing because gluing these up the way I did is a lot of extra work. So in the new files, I actually created an easier way to connect and glue these pieces together. Also of note, I had a problem with the print in a couple of these spots. Not entirely sure why, but the filament didn't get laid down all the way to the top. So I had to use some thin styrene and spot putty to level these areas off. If there is anything I've learned when it comes to owning a droid, they need constant care and attention. They're high maintenance, so having an easy way to get to the electronics inside is critical. To access the interior of the droid, I wanted a quick and simple way of doing so. So we installed rare earth magnets to the top dome and assembly to the body. This will make accessing the electronics super easy.
take just a couple of seconds to talk about the dome. We're obviously using our cast domes, and soon they'll be available for purchase on our website. But as I said to you, you'd be able to build this project without anything fancy, and that includes the domes. You can use this for your projects. That's right, it's a restaurant style cake lid. And this is exactly what we used when we created our two thirds scale domes. You can get this online for less than seven bucks and create your own dome. And I put a link in the description below. This little DD3 programming droid is really coming along. I think so far it's a good likeness to the artwork. I did get the body section a little bigger than I would have liked. I made it too tall and a tad too wide, so it doesn't match 100%. But overall, I like how it's shaping up. Now this is gonna be a great project, but also a big one. So we're looking at a series of episodes here before we get our little guy finished. We wanna thank Steve Corman for allowing us to take his concept and bring it to life. And a huge thank you to Michael and the Programming Electronics Academy team for sponsoring this video. We could not do this project without you. Now, for the month of November, for all you smugglers out there, if you go to the PEA website and use the code SMUGGLER when you sign up for either their annual or monthly subscription, you'll get 20% off for the month of November. We have all the information and details on that in the show notes below. Now I gotta get back to work before the other Brian shows up and starts complaining. So we'll see you next week when we continue on this project of building something out of nothing. And as far as the droid that we've chosen, it's M... <laughs> That's right, we've teamed up with the Programming Electronics Academy to build you... <laughs> you have a great look on your face, Joel. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,